altogether terrific value. And this is what a lot of players who wanted to get onto the attack early liked about the black system. However, well, since then, actually, since the early days when black got such fantastic results, attention has tended to shift towards variations where white declines the gambit. And there are plenty of those which we could play, but I want to take this variation head on, and I'm going to suggest you accept the Benko gambit, if only for the reason that a lot of Benko gambit players these days expect you to decline. They don't expect you to take them head on and accept the pawn. Well, I'm going to show you an interesting system that White can play against this uh, line, where he does in fact take the pawn. Here we see Black setting up his formation. And now the twist, knight to h3. This is the unusual twist which gives our system a bit of individuality. And it's quite an interesting move. Firstly and foremostly, White overprotects that pawn at d5. He makes it really difficult for Black to attack and surround that pawn. Quite often in this variation, you see Black playing his knight to d7, and then his knight to b6 to attack that pawn. And with the knight on f3, White often has to waste time defending it. Well, with the knight on h3, you don't have to think about that. And the knight can often come into play via f4 a little later on. To illustrate how the game might go, my first game comes from the Bundesliga in 2005, and it's a very good game between world-class grandmaster Mikhail Gurevich and the international master from Germany, Bernd Schneider. Both sides castled, and now Black continued to set up his formation with knight bd7. Now, having set up this ideal picture postcard with his minor pieces, Black is getting ready to develop his major pieces to the queen side. He wants to bring his queen out, and then the rook on f8 slides across to b8 with excellent pressure. Nevertheless, White continues with a typical queen manoeuvre in this line, queen to c2. I would say that is, that is one of the best squares for White's queen here. And White is preparing, in general, to play moves like b3, maybe a4, maybe rook b1, and gradually consolidate the position out. The queen on c2 necessarily protects the knight on c3. That's one of the main reasons why one would play that move. So in this game, black played knight e8. After knight e8, there came rook to d1, a further overprotection of the pawn. And black played his knight to c7. Now white played a4, and the point of that is to stop the black knight from coming to b5. So a4, queen goes to b8, and now white play rook b1. Now the way black plays in this game, I think is rather slow. He's allowed white to set up the ideal opening formation here for his pieces. Now white's getting ready to play b3, bishop b2, after which he should really simply be a pawn up for nothing. So black plays a peculiar move here, bishop c8. That uncovers the rook on a8, and hopes to reintroduce the bishop via f5, a little later on. But white continues majestically with his plan, b3. Knight comes to e5, opening up the bishop, and Gurevich brings his knight into f4. Knight a6. Well, here was another reason why black vacated the a6 square with his bishop. He wants to bring his knight into b4 to attack the white queen. But white is not phased by that, and just continues with bishop b2. This is an ideal setup for white, and you should take note of it carefully. If you need to go over this game again to familiarise yourself with the way white handles his pieces, please do so. But take a look, because black has no compensation for the pawn in this position. The only thing he's got is a nice square on b4 for the knight, but white easily sidesteps any threats with queen to d2. So black tries to stir up trouble by pinning the knight. But now white puts his knight on b5, which is an excellent outpost. Not only does the knight come to a strong square, the bishop on b2 is uncovered. Black is already really struggling to prove compensation. Schneider brings his bishop back to a6, and Gurevich drops the knight back to a3, again emphasising his control. After that comes rook a7, and now white plays bishop c3. A multi-purpose move.